this is Smart Jock Kim, and now we're rocking right here with Brandon J. right here on the Oh My God Music TV. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Brandon. Welcome to On Air with Brandon J. I've got a special guest, national recording artist. He's also a football player. That's right. He's a, an athlete, a collegiate athlete. Marja Kim. Marja, what's up, man? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good, man. First off, Happy New Year to you, man. Did, did you have a good holiday? Of course, I had a great holiday. You know, I spent it with, you know, my family and um, my brother and stuff like that and, and, and my parents. So, you know, it's a great new year and I'm ready to get 2023 started the correct way, you know, dropping a lot more music, and everything like that. I'm, I'm excited. Man, that's what's up. And in the song Party in the Hills, let's talk about you. You've already received over 150 thousand views on youtube these are not bots this is real traffic your, your stuff is doing well i had a chance to listen to it i'm gonna play it after this interview on iheart and uh i gotta say man i'm impressed like to, to get the people that you're working with behind you it's not easy i mean naughty by nature opp that's before your time but yeah that that's yeah. a classic yeah um it's definitely before my time but you know uh They've been my family ever since, I, you know, obviously since I was a kid, ever since I was in the womb, that's been my uncles and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not it's not too different, you know, working with them, being as though I've been around them my whole life. But it's definitely a, an exceptional thing to have the people, some people like that work that stature in my corner. You know, it definitely, you know, goes a long way and um, helps with the, the type of music I make. So. Yeah, for sure. And and what are some of the things you've learned from these folks? Because there's so much to learn from people that have already been where you're where you're going. You know, um, I've definitely learned from, you know, from my uncle um, and just my father alone, just going along in life. You know, my dad has always been there for me. And, you know, with him being um, a great manager and showing over millions of records, he knows how to sell records. And um, they just one of the things I learned from them is, you know, repetition is key. So, you know, just constantly being in the studio, you know, recording all the time, you know, just having myself in that whole writing mindset and stuff like that, you know, just keeping myself, even though even when I was in football season, you know, just sending me over beats and just keeping me writing and writing and writing. So even though I was focused on football, I still was writing songs, you know, making songs and stuff like that. So I wasn't completely just not writing it, but that's definitely one of the things I learned. And, you know, um, definitely uh, another thing that I learned um, from my father is, um, you know, just that drive, you know, having to every single time I go in the studio, just wanting to every song to be better than my last song, you know, putting that's the same thing um, I put into football. You know, you go on, you work extremely hard on the, on, on the field and practice so that when you get to the game, you know, it's, it's easy. So and that's that's just well, another that's thing what that I, I was going to say. It's the same stuff, right? It's it's repetition. Yeah. It's determination. It's persistence. I, I mean, let, let's just bring up, you know, football for just a second. Georgia yeah. versus at TCU, I mean, that was a slaughter yeah, in the national championship game that <laughs> they both had to prepare for, right? Yeah. So, you know, that was that was kind of crazy. You know, 65 to 7 in the national championship game is not something that you normally see. But going out there, you could just tell that Georgia was a, a more a better prepared team. You know, they were ready. They had been there in, in lights, um, under the lights before. And you could tell that that just wasn't their first time there. And um their head coach and everything just com prepared them completely just call it what it is just a lot better than TCU and when they got out there on that field it, it showed I, re I remember Marja Kim uh Kirby the uh the head coach of Georgia yeah. he said uh that he was going hunting he said he told all his players for the game yeah he told them they definitely went hunt, man <laughs> yeah that was definitely a hunt 65 to 7 I was definitely a hunt you know, the game was kind of relatively over before halftime was even started. So it was kind of it was kind of crazy. But I mean, like I said, that just comes with another thing. Like I said, just repetition is key. You could tell that you yeah. know, they were really practicing and they really went and watched film. And, you know, shout out to TCNJ. I mean, TCU for, um you know, making a. Uh, making the playoffs and making a national championship and everything like that. But, you know, Georgia just was a better prepared team that night. I, I couldn't, I could not predict uh, who was going to be in the national championship. This was, this was unpredictable this year for sure. Mm -hmm. So definitely, definitely unpredictable going out the season and, you know, just me being a college football player and everything like that myself, you know, 
Um, I've definitely been watching football all year. So you're right. It definitely was looking a little, you didn't know who, which way to go as far as who's going to be the national title winner this year. But, you know, shout out to Georgia and the big one that they had in the national championship. Were you being at Tennessee State, man, and, and working under uh, someone, a, a semi Hall of Fame member, uh, Eddie George? I, I know there's a lot of key takeaways that not you, not only you, just you, but your your teammates can take away from somebody that's that's competed on that professional level. So I, I'm anxious to see what you guys are going to do this coming season, man. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm excited for what we have coming up this year. Um, you know, we didn't have the best season last year, but, you know, we're still putting the pieces together. We're still putting the pieces, um, connecting all the dots and, you know, crossing all our T's and dotting all our I's. So next year will definitely be a better year for us. But playing for a coach like Eddie George is definitely, you know, something that uh, was on my bucket list, just playing for a, a player, uh, someone who was in the NFL, you know, that was always something I wanted to do, you know, connect with somebody who's been there and done it before. And, you know, going into practice with someone like him and definitely is key because in practice, he tells us and lets us know, like, okay, this is going to fly at the next level. This is going to fly at the next level. And for someone me, for someone like me who is trying to get to that next level, that's what I want to hear. You know, I want to know, like, oh, okay, like, this is how it goes and this is how it goes. You know, a lot of coaches, you know, come into the situation and some coaches, you know, they never play football at the next level, but they're a good coach. You know what I'm I mean, saying? look at primetime. I mean, you you just, yeah. you just I, I, I look at what primetime prime time did at Jackson State University. Now he's at Colorado. Mm -hmm. And it, he, he said, you got to level up. I mean, that, that's what you got to do, but not only in, in, in football, but let's talk about music. You got new music coming out this year. You got more songs coming out. Like, what's it like working in the studio with KG and some of these other producers? Um, It's definitely like, it's definitely like uh, sometimes, you know, even though he's my uncle, when you get in, uh, you know, the studio sessions with him or like you get in, you walk in, you get a, get a beat from him. It's like, OK, you kind of like your wheels are kind of spinning. You know, you have to make the correct song on this beat being as though who the type of producer he is and the people he's produced for, you know, Queen Latifah, Jaheem, all these people, crazy people he's already um uh, produced for so you know sometimes it is it's like you get a little bit of butterflies in your stomach like oh okay like I'm dealing with the real deal right now you know you're dealing but, with the real deal and you, you better <laughs> yeah. deliver nephew I yeah know now you have to you be yeah. saying. <laughs> exactly you have to deliver so um yeah like when I go in there and, and working with them it's definitely a, a a dream come true I mean they've been around me my whole life but I wasn't always making music so I was around right. them with a standpoint of um, them just being my uncles and oh what's up um, like that was my uncle but now to be you know working on actual music with him and yeah. you know having uh focusing on that music standpoint with him and getting in there on that standpoint it, it was a little different at first but you know I've been doing it for a little while now so I'm kind of you know, kind of used to it now what, what do you think Marja Kim is the the hardest thing to balance between playing sports and you know performing and and recording and all of those different things I say um, uh, the outside life, I would say, is the most predominantly hard thing for me to keep up with, you know, keep up with my friends and stuff like that outside of, you know, doing this. You know, it, it tends to get a little busy. You know, my friends start to hit me up sometimes like, yo, what's up? Like, what you doing? Like, I haven't heard from you in a long time. And, you know, I just got to reassure them, like, you know, it's not like I um, it's not like I don't mess with you anymore or anything like that. It's not like we still close, you know, I'm just working right now. So that's definitely the, the hardest thing um, to maintain, you know, during football season, I kind of focus more on just football. So I still be writing and stuff, like I said before, but I'm more so focused on football. So during, during that time, I'm not really, you know, putting out um, music. I mean, coming up this year, um, I will be putting out music during football season because I just have so many songs now sitting in the vault. So I don't have to, relatively record during the season to put it out but you know um that's that's definitely I would say the hardest thing is you know keeping up with the outside people you know even like my my parents sometimes like my mom she starts to say like I haven't seen you in a while like it feels like you know, <laughs> right really, you know now, where'd you go that's just, you know I'm, I'm working I'm, I'm yeah I'm doing I because the thing that I've learned Marja Kim is when you know like for example producing this show right this podcast it's not about okay I've got a podcast. I launched it. That's the easy part. 
Now the yeah. real work begins because you, whatever you start with, you got to finish. So I've got to mm -hmm. consistently be thinking outside the box. I can't ask everybody the same question because then it becomes redundant. And it's like, what are we listening to this whack show for, right? Is it fire <laughs> yeah. or is it not? You know, is it a zero yeah. or is it a hero? And, <laughs> and I agree with what you're saying, man. I mean, you know, it's tough, but you got you to gotta sacrifice in order to gain something. Yeah. And that's another thing that, um, you know, uh, Eddie George teaches us at school. Just another thing, you know, having him as a coach, you know, he teaches his whole and preaches uh, this thing at um, TSU. You know, his his big thing is the word guts, you know, gutsion, understanding, tenacity and sacrifice is the last word, you know. So, you know, that's just learning, being with him. You just learn how you have to sacrifice things and, you know, you have to put other things before certain things just to you know, make sure that everything is straight and that and that's what just what sacrifice means. So, you know, being with him, he teaches us that. My father has taught me that my whole life and that's just how I go through life, you know, just um, swinging down those avenues and, you know, making sure that everything is correct as far as work is concerned. That's a great philosophy and a great work ethic to live by. Something I wanted to ask you, and I haven't interviewed an athlete in a very long time and something that is just, I was just like, I got to ask him. I'm just curious to see his perspective. What was your take on when uh, DeMar Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills collapsed on the football field? Um, you know, like, I just want to say first thing and foremost, I want to say, you know, um, uh, I can't even imagine um, what was going through DeMar's Hamlin and, um, and, and his family and just everybody around the Buffalo Bills organization and everybody close to him. I want to say that, you know, um, I pray for him, you know, each and every, each and every day and each and every night, I, I pray for him. Um, that was a, a very, very, you know, deep situation, especially with a person like me being as though I play football, you know, it kind of hit a little more deeply on my end because, you know, as me being an athlete and playing football, that could have very well been me on the football field as well. So looking at it from that standpoint, it is a little bit scary, but um, I just, like I said, I just want to say, you know, uh, he's a great player, you know, and my take on it is, is that, you know, I, like I said, I can't, I can't even imagine, start to imagine where like the thoughts and, and, and how he's feeling right now, you know, obviously he's feeling better. He uh, opened his eyes, you know, but for him to collapse on the field and, you know, go to um, the University of Cincinnati, um, you know, doctors and then his, for him to collapse again, you know, because that, that was, was wild, it man. Once, I, it was I've never seen anything twice. like that. And, and yeah. Marja Kim, you know, something that, I was curious about, you know, and, and I may get backlash for this, but I don't care, right? I marched to the beat of my own drum. I'm one of those people, right? Yeah. My, my <laughs> question to you, my friend, do you think the COVID vaccine had anything to do with him collapsing on the field? I'm going to be completely honest, too. I'm right with you. I feel 100% that, you know, um, COVID-19 vaccine was definitely played a part inside of, the, um, inside of him collapsing. If you look at the the hit of Damar Hamlin that the hit doesn't even look like it's a hit that's supposed to do something like that. No, it, it didn't, didn't even look even, like targeting or anything because I've seen like yeah, way like worse hits than that. Yeah, exactly. I've seen way worse hits and people got up, but you know, for him to get hit right here where he got hit directly on his heart and then for it to get hit directly at that that very correct second, because that's what the doctor said for you to for his heart to stop, it, he had to get hit at the correct sec second at the at the correct spot at the right time. So for that to happen like that, I definitely think it was other things that played a role in the COVID vaccine. I, I believe definitely it is being though people who are in the NFL are now on their like fifth booster shot or something like that now you know they already say that COVID increases like heart problems and stuff like that so when you shoot yourself up with the COVID vaccine which is putting this into your body you know if, of course you know you can't expect for every person who takes this vaccine to not feel some type of way you know everybody reacts to it different so you don't know what possibly could have went that's wrong that's what I'm saying like and I even had family members of mine right that were like Brandon mm -hmm. you need to get the COVID vaccine and I said I'm not getting it and I had so much backlash, but now I look at the future of where we are, you know, two and a half years later, and I'm like, oh my God, Marja Kim, I'm so thankful I didn't get that vaccine. You yeah, you may have yeah. called me stupid or stubborn, whatever, but I'm here and I'm in season two of All There <laughs> with Brandon J, and this thing is rocking. And, you know, and, and it's sad because, like, man, like Tiny Lister Debo from Friday, like, I was the last guy to interview him. 
and yeah. we talked about the COVID vaccine and he had COVID while doing the interview and mm. he was a pro like, Hey, go get the vaccine and all this stuff. And then he passed yeah. away and I've, and now seeing what's happened to so many people. And you know, most recently Damar Hamlin, I'm like, are the colleges even prepared? Like, would you say that Tennessee State University is prepared if something like this happens to you, God forbid, or any of your teammates? Are they prepared for something like this? I just, to, to be honest, like, that's such a freak accident, what happened to Damar Hamlin. I don't just think, like, obviously, you know, people have these types of situations set up and they set these types of situations up for people to, you know, go and practice for these types of situations to know how to deal with these types of situations. But honestly thinking, I don't think anybody's ever prepared for something like that. As much as you, as much as you try and try and try and try for something like this, when it happens, I don't think that anyone's ever fully prepared for someone to just collapse on the field. So I want to say, I think we have things predominantly under control. If I was to, you know, get collapse on the field, we could get me to a, a hospital ASAP and stat. Um, but, you know, that's just such a freak accident. Like I said, I don't think anybody, not Tennessee State, not Al even Alabama, as you can see, the Buffalo Bills weren't even fully um you know, ready for something like that. So if they're not ready, then, you know, um, it's hard for me to say as a collegiate team. I think team that's that the we'll... first game that I've seen an ambulance, right? Yeah. Rush out on the field. I'm like, yo, he was not breathing for 10 minutes. Like God was looking after DeMar. God was for, definitely looking for after real. him for him to, and then for him to, you know, collapse again and then be able to bring himself back to, you know, back to life again. You know, God definitely has his hand and definitely is touching DeMar Hamlin. And that's all of the people who've prayed for him. And, you know, that just comes from the type of person he is. You know, he has a, um, he, ha he has a foundation where he's funding for uh, young kids and stuff like that. And everybody was donating to and everything like that for him. So, you know, just the type of person he is, I feel like God definitely rewarded him with life. And, you know, like they said, he, he, the first thing he did when he asked, when he waked up, when he woke up was, did we win? And everybody just told him like, you won the game of life. And that's the most thing that's entirely important. So powerful, man. And, and you know, it's crazy, right? Cause you're, you're, prof you're, you're an athlete, right? You understand yeah. Tim Tebow, was was uh, praying on the field a couple years ago and ESPN and all of them were talking about he was crazy for this. And then you saw this happen with them uh, when this happened to DeMar the other night and it's just game changing, right? It, it shows that everybody has to look at it. It's bigger than just the game of football. Yes. It's and the that's game what of I life. Say yeah, it's, it's a game of life. And that's what I'm saying. Just, you know, how I feel about the DeMar Hamlin situation is just open my eyes as a person as to why, you know, you don't want to just be an athlete, you know, because you never know when being an athlete can possibly end and when it, when it can be when it can be your last play. You never know when that last play can be for you, whether it's collapsing on the field, which is the extreme, you know, but or just even tearing your ACL, breaking your leg in a certain way where you can never play football again. And um, with me personally, uh, I've been taught, you know, just to have multiple incomes and do multiple things. So, you know, I have different ways of, you know, receiving revenue and everything like that. And um, my label was named We Never Done Entertainment. So I kind of just go by that slogan, you know, I'm never done, I'm always working. So that just opened my eyes again to DeMar Hamlin's situation about having different avenues and, you know, having to guide your way of life and different things and not just putting all your marbles into one basket because you never know when you have to go, you have to have an A and B, you know, and C because you never know when yeah, you, you got to You got to be ready routes. because you guys, you, you it, it's such a risk every time you and others step out on the football field. You never mm -hmm. know, even, even on the basketball court, right? You never know if that's going to be your last game like Kobe Bryant or whoever, right, when you get hurt. And so you always got to like the Kevin Ware situation, the Kevin Ware situation where his bone popped out. I never, you know, wanted to experience something like that. Seeing like seeing something like that, that's a could be a career ender injury as well. So, you know, every sport is you putting your life kind of on the line when you go out there, you never know what's going to happen, but you just have to be prepared. And, you know, working with Tennessee State, they work hard on, you know, preparing our bodies. And, you know, we go to physical therapy and stuff like that all the time. So we can be, you know, fully, you know, have our bodies prepared for what we, when we indulge into war on that football field. Man, Margie Kim, what, what advice do you have for artists out there 
that um, are trying to make a name for themselves in tw- 2023? Um, I feel it though, if you definitely want to make a name for yourself, you definitely have to go into a situation and be yourself. You know, that's what I have. The, that's the advice I have for, you know, young up- upcoming artists in 2023 is, you know, just be yourself. And um, when you go in there, like I said, just have that mindset that you're constantly working and working. And like I said, repetition is key. If you a person who wants to be an artist, you know, you got to be in the studio all the time. You got to constantly work your brain with music. You got to constantly and, and just don't be afraid to branch out and do other things that are out of the norm, because that's when you you, you blow up astronomically is when, you know, you come with something original something original that no one has seen before and it's just so much you that people just fall into love with it they just you know want to know more about it and it's just you know I like like I said um people who come into the situations and you know everybody who's trying I don't have nothing against anybody who tries to you know oh like their favorite rapper is Lil Baby so they want to sound like Lil Baby you know but you're never going to be I always say you're never going to be better at sounding like Lil Baby than Lil Baby because there's that's only one him. little baby that's right yeah there's only one little baby I mean you could try to make a song you might get it off you know what I'm saying one song you know here and there but you predominantly that's little baby sounds so he's always going to have the peak of that so that's my, my that's just my you know um my niche that I say I found when I go in the studio I try to sound like myself I don't try to sound like anybody else I go in there with the intent of making my own sound um so yeah so that when I come everybody just says something like oh like I never heard a sound like this before, you know, and it's just original. That's what I say. What sells the most is original. Is is that's it, man? It, it trumps everything, man. At Marja Kim, I appreciate you jumping on the interview, man. Congrats yes, on Party in the Hills and the current success Thank you're you. having. And I'm looking forward to hearing the new music. We're playing Party in the Hills right here on air with Brennan J. Marja yes, Kim, sir. I will see you soon, my friend. Nice seeing you. Nice speaking to you. Thanks for having me on air today. Yes, sir. On air with Brennan J. Marja Kim. I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now. Hang on. Thank you for tuning in to On Air with Brandon J. Follow on Instagram at I am Brandon J.